guys and welcome back from where are we? Tallinn. Tallinn, the so-called peninsula of the world. <laughs> and the Baltic capital. Yeah, if you are a regular viewer of this vlog, which is not a vlog, it's a podcast. It's interesting. And really interesting, <laughs> this kind of... An insight. Uh, um, you might just wait for the next podcast, which is just published by now. And today's topic will be a very interesting one and some topic I'm very, very excited about because it's really like, like if all previous topics were personal to some extent, this is really very highly personal, just super personal topic. And it will be... Leaving. Leaving. So if you are a leaver, is this a word in English? It is now. It is now. Then you may learn something or you may think... God, I'm not the only one. Because leavers, as from my experience, are always the only ones in mm. their kind of social group. There can be only one lever. There are two levers. It's not considered leaving anymore. It's just like a group of no people one's that there. has different <laughs> interests than another group of people. Yeah. But if it's one person, it will always be a lever. And I want to ask you a question. Me? Uh, yes. Actually, I don't have a question. I just... Well, I want to ask you, why did you want to talk about this? Well, it's just some current uh, happenings just as of today. I've been to this workshop um, where my plan was to just leave on the very first day out of seven days. Just sneak away, just sneak out of the place and just leave. Because there's a certain fascination of leaving things. And the more formal... Um, the things are the greater the fun leaving them so the most in my experience the place where leaving is the most enriching thing to do is like a paid movie in the cinema mm -hmm. where you just leave before it's over or like a theater piece or like a lecture like mm -hmm. all these kind of rather formal things where there's a beginning and an end are good to leave not necessarily good for your career or for like your friends but like for, for, for me at least it developed this way that I'm feeling I gained a lot of time a lot of freedom a lot of responsibility but at least speaking for the responsibility um, just leaving things is not really like taking responsibility for anything it's just like feeling kind of great I don't know. are you like a lever? What do you mean? Are you leaving things when you're not supposed to? Because when we get to know each other, the thing that um, catched my attention was that you asked me to leave your party. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. But I think that was uh, maybe out of um, a hyper-social awareness of like two coexisting narratives not working well together at the same time. Yes, so it wasn't out of personal interest that you like to leave things. I I do I do tend to leave things. I don't know whether I it's to the extent that I like it that I like enjoy it, mm -hmm. but I I I do tend to leave things. We spoke the other day. You call it a Polish goodbye. I call it an Irish goodbye, <laughs> where you leave out the back door. And my family always talk about that that you never do like an overly sensational goodbye. Why do you call it Irish goodbye? I think, I mean... What's with the Irish people there? Uh, I don't know. It's for, through years and years and years we call it that. But I think it's to do with the idea of um, you come in through the front door and say hello. Mm -hmm. And then you would, on terraced houses, mm -hmm. you would leave out the back door. Without stopping in Without between. stopping in between. Is this what Irish people do? I don't know. I mean, it's a, probably a horrible a generalization and sort of social stereotype to say that but um i did ask you to leave but i think that was that was a different that was a slightly exceptional mm -hmm. circumstance but yeah i'm probably i am probably a lever um e like i think one of my friends closest friends would probably say that i leave um more than i stay oh uh for the long run but then having said that in other situations i would be the last to leave 
You're asked to leave? I would be the last to leave. Uh, yeah. Not asked to leave. Not very often. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it may happen. I never want to be the last to leave. There are very few situations where I've been the last to leave. Mm-hmm. But leaving... In the fr- I don't know what is so interesting about leaving, but it's just that a new world just opens up in the moment of you left. Like, even though I would just leave this podcast now, it would just be like... I'm still in my flat and it would just be something new. Everything would feel so great because I have like this kind of obligation of having this podcast, but leaving it really makes me so much more free. I mean, they're the same possibilities, but it's just so different. It's just like, and then of course there's this other layer of always imagining what happens to the people. What would they say? What would they think? Why this person just left? Um, So, you know, if you, if you leave something, and uh, like it's in a cinema or something and the, the movie is over and your friends are like still there and they're kind of what just happened with him they, because they would maybe assume that there was a important reason why I left and there wasn't any important reason it's just like out of personal preferences of leaving rather than staying mm-hmm. does that make sense to you? yeah you're kind of tired? <laughs> I'm tired yeah <laughs> But I also think, uh, well, maybe because I am actually leaving Talon in like two days. So mm-hmm. maybe I can only think about one type of leaving at the moment. Which type? Leaving somewhere for good. For good? Mm. What's the good? No, as in like forever. Uh, does that mean forever? Yeah, leaving for good means leaving f- like full stop. I'm, I'm, I apologize for my English. Uh, if you also hate it, leave it in the comments below. Your English is great. I'm just being stubborn. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, but you're leaving as you're supposed to leave. So you have like this deadline of yeah. leaving and you're approaching it. And I don't like that. Whereas I'd rather leave in the way that we've been talking about up until now, like in an unexpected, maybe somewhat kind of surprising, inappropriate way mm-hmm. than leaving... The act of leaving when you are scheduled to leave, yes. when you have to leave, yes. is is horrible to it me. Is. It is. And then people sometimes, this sort of sentimental goodbye moments, like hugging, like especially in, uh, no like prejudices here, but especially in the rather southern European countries where goodbye, like because where I'm from, when someone is leaving, it's like, mm, bye. It's like very dry, cold. But then I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the more south I go in Europe, the more it is like, oh, bye-bye. It's like, yeah. it takes my, like, takes like five minutes to leave so that I'm, like, being me, I'm already leaving five minutes earlier because I know it will take five minutes to actually leave until everyone said goodbye and this kind of procedure. And then, and how's it in Britain? What's the kind of... How do you say goodbye? How uh, long does it take to say goodbye? Well, I think in generally speaking across the UK, it's probably quite brief and quite to the point. Mm-hmm. But then I come from a family where, like, we're a mixture. With, like, my mum is very, like, cultured and has adopted lots of little intricacies that belong to like French and Italian or whatever cultures Mm -hmm. handed down from her parents but my my dad is very um traditionally British he came from like Welsh mining stock Mm -hmm. so that was like no kisses Rory if you hear that (laughs) he gets so many shout outs in this podcast shout out for Rory guys um so it's a mixture I think which is maybe why I have a an uneasy relationship with leaving because I I'm, I was confused. You, why why were you confused? Because I'm getting one response to leaving from my dad and one from my mum. Maybe I don't know. Ah, but they're... I grew up in a split leaving household. <laughs> <laughs> like introducing a new terminology. New terminology. <laughs> um, so how is your dad boundaries. saying goodbye? Can you just perform it shortly? Where my dad he holds people by the shoulders oh <laughs> so she's really funny i shouldn't move because i'll make too much noise but he when you know when you kiss on the cheek mm-hmm. and you would just like where would you put depends how close you are to that person but you would just generally like 
put your arms somewhere loosely around them, maybe like on the elbows or something. Yeah, even even lower. I or think. even lower. Okay. Yes. My dad, maybe, yeah. maybe it's because he's small, but he goes for he puts his hands on both shoulders. But I would think he would do that and because goes, he's big. No, because yeah. he's tiny. Not yeah. tiny, but really small. Repeat that out later. <laughs> no, no, he knows he's tiny. <laughs> okay. Um, but I've always noticed that about him. He, when he says goodbye and when he says hello, he puts his hands on both shoulders and goes like like he's looking for purchase. How does it feel? Because if I he imagine, doesn't do it with me. Right, but he would do it with me. But he would do it with you, I guess. Or he'd definitely do it with like any of my female friends. And that would be interesting. I he would probably I... shake your hand. Yeah, but then after or one maybe hour, after like that... maybe after like a year, he'd give you a hug. <laughs> If I'm not giving him a hug earlier. If you gave him a hug, he'd, he'd hug you back. But mm. he think he'd generally be like, bye, Tom. <laughs> like such a strict kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's but not this, really this like, like that. tone but... of voice implies yeah. already that I should take care of my studies. I should be a nice guy. Like there's so much in this tone of the voice. Yeah. Um, and your mother? How is she saying goodbye? She's advice? soft as... She's like unset jelly. Yeah. She would put both her arms around you mm -hmm. and go like... Oh yeah. For me, it's like my mother is kind of um, what I like. Very like cold and distant. Like in the best case scenarios, she would say bye. Mm. And in the other scenarios, it's just like um, silent agreement that I'm leaving now. It's like yeah, what? How should I say goodbye? I mean, everyone knows that this would be usually sad. So why should I say it? I think my father is more like extending the procedure of saying goodbye. Mm. Mm. Either way is fine, but person, my personal preference is definitely keeping it as cold and distant as possible. Even like waving one kilometer distance between the persons is perfect situation. You know. Mm -hmm. What what is it for you that? Or what what does the term leaving actually mean? Huh? What does the term leaving actually mean? Um. Well, is it like? Because you can, on one hand, one hand, you can think there's something and you leave it to nothing. Yeah? If you are somewhere at an event and you are leave, you are kind of alone and you are uh, uh, like apart from this event, you leave into something where you don't know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Maybe it's like a usual surrounding, but there's basically nothing scheduled. Yeah. Um, but then I think like leaving has a lot to do with, it's not like, actually exiting from some is it a word exiting mm -hmm. exiting from somewhere but it's rather the desire of going into something else yeah but i think that's i was going to say that that's very important the yeah, because, differentiation between the two yes because then the more formal the event is you just left the more kind of empty it may feel or the more kind of standard or the more kind of whatsoever and then everything else which i titled first as nothing suddenly becomes really the place of like where everything can basically happen it's kind of fun palace where everything is possible so it's really like the wish to be at the pulse of something you don't know what it is but really like going somewhere because in the moments where i'm leaving i'm usually not just going straight home and sitting on my chair and thinking like <laughs> i just left but it's definitely i would like stroll around and kind of try to make the best out of this moment, try to grasp like a certain spirit of the time and that I just left. And then, for example, if I left a movie 20 minutes before it finished, I would stroll around for 20 minutes and then when the movie is finished, I'm kind of coming back to my normal kind of structure, scheduled kind of habit. So it's really... So you're buying yourself 20 minutes of like naughty extra legal time. Yeah. I like yeah. how you call it no, not the extra Ill why would you call it illegal time because I don't know the idea that you're not supposed to have it but I think I have a different relationship between those two types of leaving mm -hmm. um, maybe they're equally as strong as each other but my relationship to leaving for the sake of leaving and for the sake of not being in a particular place anymore is different to my relationship to leaving somewhere just so that you can walk around or go somewhere better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's this like awful abbreviated term which people use in the UK at the moment called, which is FOMO, which means the fear of missing out. 
and it's just something that I have never ever struggled with people refer to it constantly in like common parlance I've yeah. never struggled with it because I don't ever think that place I'm sure that place is better I'm sure that place is better instead I'd rather leave somewhere whether you say formal it could be anywhere mm-hmm. um, to go somewhere else because I didn't feel like comfortable or mm-hmm. relaxed in that other place but not because I think that there are like other cooler, better, greater things going on. But then equally, that and that's a really special thing. That's like a part of independence that I hold very dear. And it's really important to me, which is why when you're constantly with someone, whoever it would be, that can be kind of jeopardized. But then separately to that, the idea of leaving for the sake of leaving is almost, why I say like illegal is because it's almost like, too sacred and too holy Mm -hmm. and it's the idea that you're not supposed to have it and it's a bit naughty and should be like kind of contraband like people don't know about it but really everyone's fighting to get that Mm -hmm. but you can't all have it because then you'll be having it and then you'll be all together again yeah I think the it's precious the idea of fear of missing like the idea of missing out something as you just said you obviously can't have everything Mm. and whatever you get you may make the best out of it but then I think for because for me one of the reasons is that I have I feel like I'm missing out something and I would leave to seek for that but then even more to that it's not important that I actually find it I just want to have the possibility of seeking it mm. which I wouldn't care about if the first event in the first place um would not have happened yeah so if there wouldn't be any like event structure I wouldn't feel this desire to leave so it's just that I feel sometimes forced in a certain environment which I decide voluntarily to go in just maybe even just because to then leave it and have this pleasure of leaving. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what, like, what the kind of thing it is about and I would even like to know how that develops because I haven't been a lever throughout my lifetime it just yeah. came to me one day well actually one of my colleagues was always doing it and at the beginning I was like kind of normal reaction, like why would you because she was like telling me that she would leave but not like to everyone else and I was like why would you leave what's wrong with you kind of this react but then after a while I just got used to it and then I kind of understood that it must be fantastic to leave certain things now because I hate when I go somewhere and I know I have to sit here for three hours and this is what I'm going to do like without having like a second possibility of what to do yeah but it's like when I have a long lecture that's like two and a half hours long yes I will always in those two and a half hours go to the bathroom and go and get a coffee yeah I don't care how much time I miss but there's a really long queue I always do it because I have to have the possibility of leaving and I don't care whether like each time I do it I'm making like a really big exit and a really big entrance and everyone stares at me it's so important to me to feel like there is the possibility that I could leave. Yeah. Which is why being at university in the difference between school where you had to be in class, whereas university you don't have to be there. Yeah. Really matters to me. That difference, that slight yes. change really is is like valuable. Uh, how do you think people react when you then come back into the classroom? Do they recognize that you have been leaving? I think always because I. Or is it just that people think, oh, she just went to the toilet or she just got a coffee? Is that kind of normal? Oh, I don't know. Probably just that I'm. Depends how regularly I have the class and how many people are in it. But I think there's definitely classes where people always will say to me, like, you always leave or you you always go somewhere. Who are you calling always at one o'clock? Yeah, I was just thinking the example you got with the pot of coffee, there's another interesting layer. Like, when I have a class. And I'm going to get a coffee and I'm going to the toilet. It might take five minutes. But then sometimes, like in these five, like if I take like five minutes, people will think, oh, he just went to the toilet, just got a coffee and then I'm back. And no one like actually wonders. But in these five minutes, I could do something much bigger. Like in five minutes, you can run around the city. You could kill someone. You could kill someone. You could like a whole bunch of yeah. great things in five minutes. And... If I would go out and kill someone, which I don't do, and then come back, I would expect them kind of to know what I have just done because I would feel guilty. Whereas where I just left for a coffee and then came back, I would just like keep it like expect it to be casual. Mm-hmm. So there's like 
this interesting thing of what you do with the time leaving. But yeah. then I guess when you leave in the lecture, it's kind of everyone knows what you're going to do. There's like certain prescribed mm. possibilities. Yeah, and that, but like if everyone knows what you're going to do when leaving the lecture, it's not so attractive at all anymore. Mm. But I think in terms of like the bigger, um, more, I don't know, emotional, important leavings you're talking about earlier, although I'm definitely like an, as I said, Irish goodbye, although I'm sure that's a non-PC phrase anymore. Mm -hmm. But there are also like certainly occasions when appropriate amount of like attention and emotion mm -hmm. should be attributed to the act of leaving. Mm -hmm. Because it's like a bookend mm -hmm. and how else can you boundary and like curtail your life mm -hmm. you have to be able to separate things yes how would you do that like how what what would be the kind of attention how, or like can you describe the kind of i think it depends on each situation yeah can you give an example well i don't know like for example i'm leaving Tallinn on wednesday morning mm -hmm. and i will have been here for like 11 months mm -hmm. so tomorrow 11 my, yeah oh. so tomorrow my goodbye to the city not specific to anyone in particular, will involve doing the things that I've enjoyed doing most in Tallinn. And for example, today I went to the beach with a friend of mine to say like goodbye to the beach and to that whole part of this summer Tallinn existence. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting the tram, I walked there. Yes. And I do that often, but because I really wanted to be able to see all the buildings and then I walked back, even though it's freezing cold. Yeah. And it took me like half an hour to get here. Yeah. But I still wanted to do it because I wanted to see everything that I've n known and seen every day on my walks. Yeah. And tomorrow I'll do the same thing. And so that's not even about one person, but that's just about a place. And I think it's about closure, whatever that means. But it's about like being able to move on to the next phase. Mm -hmm. do you... Whereas if I just left now, just mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. if I left then I think I would feel regret or or some kind of empty something. So do you visit all these places in order to miss them even stronger? No, it's not it's not like a ritual thing and it's not like a, a like a to-do list. Mm -hmm. It's just that there are like just by performing a certain number of I don't know, like slightly emotionally aware actions, then I'm able to close up this like Pit episode in my life yeah in a kind of rounded holistic way yeah I think this sums it up quite well as a last statement um, there are a whole bunch of reasons to leave um, let us know if you are a leaver and what it means for you because this topic as of now feels like a to be continued topic because mm. I felt like I haven't this reflected enough to kind of explain why it's happening I'm just, we're kind of just kind of describing the circumstances of how it feels and what it does with you and maybe other people and the kind of settings but what's the kind of re why why <laughs> the, the, the kind of why question why is it actually there what does it trigger um, all right thanks for listening Tune in next time, which will be, I guess, very soon. Mm -hmm. And the topic we can't talk about it now. No, mm -mm. we can't. So subscribe to the channel if you want to, or desubscribe then again <laughs> if you want to. And so long. Bye. <laughs>